Buongiorno, siamo lieti della vostra presenza in questa domenica qui a San Paolo, entro le mura di Roma. Vi chiediamo per favore di avere in mano il bollettino bilingue, inglese e italiano per poter partecipare vivamente a questa Santa Eucaristia. Anche per chi desidera il sermone in italiano lo trovate all'ingresso sul tavolino. Vi chiediamo per favore di fare attenzione ai fogli in allegato al bollettino. Lì troverete tutte le attività della nostra parrocchia, della nostra comunità. Di nuovo benvenuti a San Paolo entro le mura di Roma e buona celebrazione. Good morning everyone. It's wonderful to see you gathered here on this Sunday morning. As Father Francisco said, uh, we welcome you here to St. Paul's Within the Walls. We do the service in English and in Italian in different parts, so this bulletin that is bilingual will be, will be your very good friend throughout this time. English is on the left-hand side and Italian is on the right. Feel free to pray in the language of your choosing. And of course, in, at other parts, if you would like to pray, for instance, the Lord's Prayer in uh, any language, you are welcome to do so. The language of the heart uh, doesn't know the exact expressions of all of our languages, so please feel free to express that as you are able. We're especially happy today because our choir is back with us after a summer away. Not that we don't enjoy singing on our own, but it is a special gift to be able to be led in song with our choir. So welcome back choir, so glad to have you, and I'm looking forward to our musical life today and throughout the rest of the season. When it comes time to communion, you are invited to receive with us here at St. Paul's. We come forward to receive the bread and also to receive the cup. You are welcome to receive in one kind only, if that is your wish. And if you do not wish to receive these uh, gifts, you can come forward and cross your arms like this and ask for a blessing in God's name, and you will have one. We have gluten-free hosts available to any who would wish. If you just raise your hand, we'll make sure you get one. Welcome again. I'm looking forward to our celebration today.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. O Dio Onnipotente, a te tutti i cuori sono aperti, tutti i desideri sono da te conosciuti, e nessun segreto è da te nascosto. Purifica i pensieri dei nostri cuori con le ispirazioni del tuo Santo Spirito, affinché possiamo amarti perfettamente ed essere degni di magnificare il tuo Santo Nome attraverso Cristo nostro Signore. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from Exodus. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided the Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. <laughs> but the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on the servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in, on, in honor of the Lord. And also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. 
So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will, accountable, will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Il Santo Vangelo di nostro Signore Gesù Cristo secondo Matteo. Gloria a te, Cristo Signore. Pietro si avvicinò e disse a Gesù, Signore, quante volte perdonerò mio fratello se pecca contro di me? Fino a sette volte? E Gesù a lui, non ti dico fino a sette volte, ma fino a settanta volte sette. Perciò il regno dei cieli può essere paragonato a un re che vuole fare i conti con i suoi servi. Avendo cominciato a fare i conti, gli fu presentato uno che era debitore 
di 10.000 talenti e poiché quello non aveva i mezzi per pagare il suo signore comandò che fosse venduto lui con la moglie, i figli e tutto quello che aveva e che il debito fosse pagato perciò il servo gettatosi a terra gli si postrò davanti dicendo signore abbi pazienza con me e ti pagherò tutto il signore di quel servo mosso a compassione lo lasciò andare e gli condonò il debito ma il servo uscito trovò uno dei suoi conservi che gli doveva cento denari e afferratolo lo strangolava dicendo paga quello che devi perciò il conservo gettato sia a terra lo pregava dicendo abbi pazienza con me e ti pagherò tutto ma l'altro non vuole anzi andò e lo fece imprigionare affinché avesse pagato il debito e i suoi conservi veduto il fatto ne furono molto rattristati e andarono a riferire al loro signore tutto l'accaduto allora il suo signore lo chiamò a sé e gli disse servo malvagio io ti ho condonato tutto il debito perché tu me ne supplicasti non, dovesti, non dovevi anche tu fa avere pietà del tuo conservo come io ho avuto pietà di te e il suo signore ha diratto lo diede in mano degli, agu degli aguzzini fino a quando non avesse pagato tutto quello che egli doveva così vi farà anche il padre mio celeste se ognuno di voi non perdona di cuore al proprio fratello Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Please be seated. Per loro che vogliono, abbiamo le copie delle sermoni in italiano per seguire con, con tutto il sermone. How do we temper mercy with justice? When is it time to hold others accountable for their actions, and when is it time to forgive others for their failures? Is there a difference between how we approach these challenges with fellow members of the church and how we do so with those beyond the church? These are some of the deep questions evoked by our readings today. From the episode of Egyptian destruction in Exodus, to Paul's desire to bless differences of religious observance while keeping the Romans rooted in Christ, to Peter's question about how many times to forgive, and Jesus' parabolic response featuring an unforgiving servant. They are not just questions of a bygone age. These are ones that we continue to struggle with today in our own time. Today I would like us to look more closely at the gospel as a way of approaching some answers. Peter asked Jesus how many times he's supposed to forgive a sibling in the church who sins against him. And rather than stating a humanly reasonable limit, like seven times, Jesus instead says forgiveness should be limitless. To illustrate his point, Jesus then likens the reign of God to a Lord who began to reckon the accounts of his servants. As would be most financially prudent, a servant whose outstanding debt was truly outrageous was brought before him. That servant's debt in talents is the equivalent of a billion euros or dollars. It's an amount so large that it approaches the American bank bailouts of 2008 in size and scope. After the servant begs to have this debt forgiven, the Lord, out of pity, cancels the debt and the servant goes free. I want you to take a moment now to get in touch with how such forgiveness might feel. Take a deep breath. Seriously, take a deep breath. And imagine what such undeserved and unearned freedom would mean to you. Now take that feeling back, back to the parable and the forgiven servant's response. Instead of seeing his newfound freedom as the template for how to engage fellow companions in the kingdom, the servant instead creates a dam on the river of forgiveness that so recently flowed his way. Pay what you owe, he then demands and throws his neighbor servant into prison instead of passing on the debt relief that he received. Word of this reaches the Lord's ears and where there was once abundant forgiveness, now the servant finds a lifetime of torture while he remains trapped under that mountain of debt. Jesus warns his hearers that God will do likewise to all of us if we do not forgive a brother or a sister from our heart. Now take a moment to let that feeling 
of unforgiveness sit with you. Take a deep breath. And notice, how does your body and your soul process the pain and the violence that arise when someone puts an end to the free flow of grace and forgiveness that was once received? I don't know about you, but I do not like the way the weight of unforgiveness sits with me. And I can eat imagine how if I chose to make unforgiveness the norm in my interactions with those who owed me something or who wronged me, then the free child of God that I am created to be would become incarcerated in an invisible and torturous prison of my own making. Perhaps you have friends or family members whose lives you've seen deteriorate because of such unforgiving accounting. And maybe hearing this feels a little heavy on you right now. While it may be tempting to judge or to fix others as identified patients in a broken system, I think a better response to Jesus' parable today is to begin with the only person over which we have even a modicum of control, ourselves. As uncomfortable as it is, and as much as it may make me squirm, the deep wisdom of this parable only starts to flower when I allow its teaching to change the way that I relate to others. As a Christian, I believe God has done an amazingly forgiving thing through becoming human in Jesus Christ and then opening the doors of resurrection by exposing the crucifying tendencies of our world toward those who tell the truth, toward those who live for love, and those who dare to challenge entrenched structures of power. The sins that I've personally accumulated in thought, in word, and in deed are heavy burdens. The sins that infect us because we exist in broken and dehumanizing systems out of harmony with creation, those are heavy burdens. As one who has tasted the abundant life and forgiveness that Christ offers, I have a choice in how I will respond. Will I allow the river of forgiveness that washes over me in baptism to flow forth from me freely? Or will I stop that flow in a failed attempt to hoard the benefit of the freedom that I've been given and see the gift of it deteriorate kind of like moldy manna and dry up within my own heart and soul. Dear siblings in Christ, we are a people called to advocate for justice and to hold the outside world accountable for its actions especially the actions that run counter to the vision of the beloved community that we have glimpsed in Jesus Christ. We are a people called to tell the truth when it is inconvenient and when it costs us social capital and social standing. 
but for us to do these things in a way that is consistent with the principles of the gospel, we must first be spiritually rooted as individuals and as members of the Christian community who draw deep from the living and forgiving water of Christ. That means facing the blockages in our own lives and our own relationships and seeking to both experience the freedom of our forgiveness and to pass it on to others. Take a moment and imagine someone whose debt you haven't canceled. Someone whose account is in arrears with you. What would it mean for them and for you to know the fullness of forgiveness? How might sharing the gift of God's grace change the way that we serve together as a church? And how might practicing this as individuals and as a community allow us to extend the borders of forgiveness beyond ourselves? Let's start small this week. I mean mustard seed small with ourselves. And perhaps with repeated practice and training, we may be better able to learn how to be stewards of mercy, stewards of mercy and justice stewards of forgiveness and accountability, stewards of necessary truth and inexhaustible love. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Each of us is finally accountable to God. So let us pray, saying, Lord, we are in need of your mercy. Have, Have patience, patience with, with us. us. Lord, we acknowledge that we all sin against our brothers and sisters in Christ. Forgive us even as we forgive each other. Help us to be merciful to each other in the church. Lord, I pray specifically for the challenges currently facing our House of Bishops and House of Deputies and all of the people who are involved, asking for your blessing as we seek to be one church, accountable and forgiving. Lord, we are in need of your mercy. Have, Have patience, patience with, with us. us. Lord, we acknowledge that we desire to repay violence with violence. Open our hearts to forgive even those who commit evil acts toward us and those we love. Help us to live mercifully in our world. Lord, we are in need of your mercy. Have patience with us. Lord, we acknowledge we do not always appreciate the diversity of your creation. Teach us to live in peace with each other and with your creation. Help us to live mercifully with our world. Lord, I pray today for the victims who continue to suffer after the earthquake in Morocco, all of the victims who suffer from the catastrophic flooding in Libya, and the poor human response that put their lives in danger. Lord, we are in need of your mercy. Have, Have patience, patience with us. Lord, we acknowledge that we do not love our neighbors as you love us. Forgive us for placing ourselves as judge over others when judgment belongs to you alone. Help us to accept the great mercy you choose to show to show others. Lord, we are in need of your mercy. Have patience with us. Lord, we pray for those whose lives are broken by evil. Because of your mercy, we believe that whatever befalls them, they belong to you. You care for the brokenhearted. Help us to share your love with all who are hurting. Mm -hmm. Lord, we are in need of your mercy. Have patience with us. Lord, we remember those who died in violence. We remember the men and women of the armed services, innocent bystanders, first responders, and even those we have called enemies. The dead belong to you, O Lord. Even as we seek your mercy for ourselves, judge all those who have died with mercy. Lord, we are in need of your mercy. Have patience with us. O God, who would fold, fold both, both heaven and earth in a single, in a single piece, piece, let, let the, design the design of thy, of thy great, great love Redeem the waste of our wraths and sorrows, and give peace to thy church, peace among nations, peace in our dwellings, and peace in our hearts, through thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. La pace del Signore sia sempre con voi. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everyone. Please be seated. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, once again, choir, thanks for being back. Stefano, maestro, thank you so much. It's a joy to be able to hear this place filled with music again in the praise of God, and also it's wonderful to hear your voices along with them, so thank you for that. Um, if you will look in your bulletin, you will see these two little announcement sheets. I draw your attention to them because you can learn a little bit more about our community, learn about what we are involved in. We are entering into the fullness of our program year. Um, you can see in Italian in the blue sheet and in English in the pink um, what we have coming up this week. So if there are things that you would like to participate in, feel free to do so. I want to draw attention right now. You may notice these lovely artworks here in the church. Um, these are uh, artworks from um, uh, Vincenzo Gulina, Gulvin, uh, who is uh, featuring different poets uh, in the Anglican tradition. Uh, we're very, very thankful to have his work here. That will be up until the 15th of October, so feel free to check that out afterwards. Uh, Vincenzo has also done uh, some works for an upcoming event at the Anglican Center, uh, which is happening on the 30th of September. They're celebrating the 50th anniversary of their library there. So um, that's a, a wonderful connection between what we're doing and the Anglican Center is doing during this time. I want to invite you all to participate, to put on your calendars October 4th, which is a Wednesday. Uh, at 7 o'clock, we're going to be premiering a film here. It'll be the European premiere, actually, of uh, A Case for Love, which is a, a film that is uh, about the call that our presiding Bishop Curry has put upon us uh, to be a community, a beloved community about love and extending God's love throughout the Jesus movement and throughout the larger world. So uh, please come and be part of that. It's a wonderful opportunity. The director is going to be here uh, and we'll be able to, to watch the film together and enjoy some light refreshments, but it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to enjoy a free movie that you won't get to see at other places. So please come and join us here. On, uh, on October 4th at 7. We will be beginning our fall programming uh, in October. Normally on Wednesdays, uh, we do a thing called Wednesday Within the Walls. Uh, so on the 4th, we won't be because we'll be doing the film premiere. But following that, we'll start up our schedule again of gathering together for dinner on the second floor and uh, some light uh, conversation and prayer. It's an opportunity to, to get to know each other and also have a place 
during the middle of our week in which we can reconnect with community between Sundays. So I do encourage you to participate in that. And we'll be announcing over the next uh, couple of weeks when once a, a month on Mondays we'll be gathering for some special events that we've had in the past. We've done film nights, we've done Bibles and beer, we've done uh, all sorts of different things in which we've tried to keep the fellowship of our community alive. And so we'll be doing that on a Monday. Uh, I have to speak to some of the coordinators to make sure which Monday we're doing that in each month, but we're going to let you know about that as we come up, so stay tuned. Are there other announcements that I'm missing for the good of the body right now? Lunch. Lunch. Thanks very much. So after the service, we invite you to coffee hour in the garden. It's a chance to get to know each other. But if you feel like you'd rather spend some time getting to know each other more and being able to dine together over a sit-down lunch, uh, a group of us will go over to the Quirinale Hotel where they have a lovely garden and provide lunch for 15 euros a plate a simple main, uh, all the water you can drink, and also a coffee afterwards. So if you are interested in doing that, uh, normally our coordinator, Larry, he's not here right now, unfortunately he's sick, but Christine, who is in the back right there, who led us in prayers, will be the person to speak with. That way we'll have the numbers that we need to be able to tell them how many to prepare for. It's a wonderful opportunity. Please do join us if you are able. I know one more thing. On the first Sunday of October, next Sunday, very exciting. We have a baptism. So uh, if you're in to that free forgiveness that flows over us in the waters of baptism, you can get to see it happen next week on Sunday. So please be here. Uh, Alexa Benedetti, member of our community, her son R2 will be being uh, baptized uh, next Sunday. We're very excited about that. And then the following Sunday, we're going to begin a practice that we had in the past, but that we haven't done for years, not since uh, COVID, which was healing prayers on the first Sunday of the month. The way this works is that after the service, uh, you can come up and uh, be prayed for by uh, the priest and also members of the Daughters of the King team. It's a wonderful chance in the prayer group. It's an opportunity to, to experience healing prayer and to also make sure that we are connected as a community in prayer. So uh, be on the lookout for that in two Sundays. We'll have more information about that in next week's bulletin, but just wanted to alert you to that. Again, wonderful to have you here. I'm so glad to see you all. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name, bring offerings, and come into God's courts.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving 
recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad, en la tierra como en el cielo, danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdón nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación, y líbranos del mal, porque tú es el reino, tú es el poder, is my glory, glory for siempre. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Doni di Dio per il popolo di Dio, the gifts of God for the people of God.
post-communion prayers found in our bulletin, would you please stand? Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Andiamo nel nome di Cristo. Christ. Rendiamo grazie a Dio. Thanks be to God.